Detective Amadi, I hereby order you to carry out your duty as our law enforcement officer by arresting Dr. Stone. I'm afraid I can't do that, Mayor. Then I hereby relieve you of duty and declare a citizen's arrest. I won't allow that either. You're finished, Amadi. Maybe, but Larissa isn't. QuietPlease.org presents 253 Matilda. At the turn of the 22nd century, the asteroid 253 Matilda was converted into an interstellar spaceship. Now 92 years into a 780-year mission, generations have come and gone. Episode 3, Trial. All right, we've got enough people now. For what, Mayor? I'm calling up the militia. That'll be all of you. With respect, Mayor, that's never been done before. We've never had a detective who flagrantly refused to enforce the law before. Detective Amadi is guilty of unauthorized visits to the Centaurians, illegal acquisition of Centaurian technology, aiding and abetting the cloning of a human being, plotting to murder the cloned human being, and refusing my direct order to arrest Dr. Stone for carrying out human cloning with intent to murder. They're in the medical center. Marissa Flint is also in there and may aid them, but she doesn't need to be arrested if she doesn't make trouble. I believe they're all unarmed and not expecting us, so we'll move in quick and overwhelm them with our numbers so nobody gets hurt. The mayor will be back and not alone. Are you sure? Does our mayor strike you as someone who calmly accepts defiance? What can we do? First I'll lock the door. But it won't take him long to override that, so let's get some things stacked up in front of it. Pushing things against the door isn't going to help. In our gravity, even our most massive objects won't have much friction with the floor. A group of people are going to be able to push through. Then what can we do? Here. Use this to cut a hole in the wall to the left of the door, about waist high. You should find the opening mechanism in there. If you destroy it, they'll have to cut their way in. That should buy us some time. I hope you have something useful in mind for that time. I'm thinking. Think faster. You know the lot. Do you know any loopholes that can buy us a day or two? By order of the mayor, you are to open this door immediately. Failure to do so will result in another charge against you. I'm conducting an experiment. Opening the door would put other compartments at an unacceptable risk of radiation exposure. Nobody's buying what you're selling, Dr. Stone. I see you've destroyed the door mechanism, but that's not going to stop us. We'll break it down, or we'll cut a hole in it, if we have to. I have an idea. Then go for it. Is Judge Lee among you? I'll only speak to Judge Lee. I'm here, Detective. Judge, we invoke our right to immediate trial before incarceration. Very well. Let me in. Sorry, I can't do that right now. The mechanism is broken. But we can handle the preliminaries talking through the door like this. 
Mayor, who do you choose to prosecute this case? Can't you see they're just going to try to keep us out with procedural delays? They're exercising legitimate rights established in our law, Mayor. Choose a prosecutor. I choose myself. Very well. What are your charges? Detective Amati is charged with acquisition of Centaurian technology, aiding and abetting the cloning of a human being, plotting to murder the cloned human being, refusing my direct order to carry out his job and resisting arrest. Dr. Stone is charged with use of Centaurian technology, human cloning, intent to murder the clone, and resisting arrest. No charges against Marissa Flynn at present. Defendant, who do you choose to represent you? We choose to represent ourselves. Would have been nice if you'd asked me first. So noted. The defense would like two days to prepare. Bullshit. 36 hours would be enough. We can be flexible. How about 36 hours? Fine. 36 hours. Meanwhile, we'll stay confined here so the doctor can continue treating his patients. That's outrageous. There's a baby in there whose life is in danger from them. You know we can't graft a baby brain into Larissa Flint. Even with growth accelerant, the clone won't be big enough to transplant for months. We want to keep it alive right now more than anyone, and nobody is better equipped to do that than I am. Under the circumstances, I grant the motion to reconvene here in 36 hours. We still need to get in there, and there's no better time than the present. I expect you all to help me get through this door. No need for that. We'll open it up tomorrow. Go home. Justice will be done. Are you the new mayor? Ambassador, I've been mayor for 17 years. I was last awakened 33 years ago. Didn't I meet you about 10 years ago during the water crisis? No, you must be confusing me with one of the other ambassadors. For what purpose did you summon me? What did Detective Amadi offer you? Excuse me, mayor, I don't understand in exchange for the technology you provided. It was a gift, Mayor. A gift? I was made to understand you do gifts in your culture. Has this changed since the last time I was awake? We have gifts, but we tend not to gift things of such value to strangers without expecting something in return. And a Centaurian would never do something without a logical reason. You humans think of us like we're machines, because you can only hear the machines translating to you. And you think of us as all the same, because your inability to comprehend our names leads you to number us. We're individuals, and I have compassion when I hear someone is suffering or dying like this Orissa Flint. You don't seem to have much compassion for her clone that's going to be harvested. That's not a person, it's simply a potential. It understands nothing. Well, we humans believe life is sacred. Except for the animals you eat, the ecosystems you destroy, the people you let die so that you don't have to technically take a life. It's not your call to make. As the mayor, it's my call. And all technology sharing must be approved through my office. Do you understand? You humans and your obsession with hierarchical social systems. You would probably arrest your own mothers if they violated your command structure. Ambassador, this is a human asteroid and you're just a guest on it. You'll obey our command structure while you're here. When we get to Proxima, my descendants will accept the Centaurian way of doing things. I wonder if they will. May I return to my section now, Mayor? Yes, please do. If it's ready now. I 
You'd say it looks old enough, wouldn't you? <laughs> My God, it looks exactly like Larissa. Oh, and the way it's looking at me. Can't you put it to sleep? Soon enough. I wish we didn't have to kill it. It was easy for me when it was a baby, but now that it looks like her... Remember, this is practically an empty husk. It has no idea who you are or what you're saying. There's no other way to save Larissa. We're doing the right thing. I still don't get why you're so invested, Detective. We only have five hours left before the trial. Is that enough time, Doctor? Yes. It's ready for harvest staying now, so if the two of you will help me out as temporary nurses, we can get this done in just a few hours. I can't help kill this thing that looks exactly like my sister. I can't look at it anymore. Amadi and I can handle it while you go prep Larissa. Okay. You are both sure you want me to do this, right? There'll be no going back. Yes. I'm sure. Let's start. Get her skull back on and all sewn up. When will we know? When will she wake up? Probably just a couple of hours. Uh, to both questions. The prosecution may proceed. This is fundamentally a very simple case. Nobody disputes what happened. The defendants admit their unauthorized acquisition of Centaurian technology and their decision to illegally create a human clone. And they've even confessed to killing that clone while they were awaiting trial. Although they claim it somehow not murder. As the other crimes are uncontested and pale in comparison, let's focus on the murder. Section 1, subsection B of our penal code defines the crime of murder as the taking of a human or centaurian life without consent. This is clearly what happened. If Larissa Flint is a human being, and we all know she is, then her clone, being a genetic duplicate, is obviously also a human being. According to our law, this was no mere medical procedure. It was a premeditated murder. The fact that the victim was created for the sole purpose of being murdered does not change anything except for proving the premeditated nature of the crime. Dr. Stone, on what basis and precedent do you claim this to have been anything other than premeditated murder. I'd like to draw the court's attention to the parallels between this case and the fight for abortion rights in the 20th and 21st centuries. There too, conservative forces argued that a creature with no experience of the outside world had some inalienable right to survival when the mother wanted to abort it. Some went so far as to forfeit the mother's right to life in favor of the fetus's supposed right to life. Your analogy is misguided, Doctor. Anti-abortion laws forced a woman to carry a child against her will. But nobody was being forced to carry the clone you created inside their body. Abortion rights were simply about bodily autonomy. The only bodily autonomy at issue today is that of the clone, 
who never consented to being murdered and harvested. But if we acknowledge that the life of a fetus is not paramount over the life of an adult, then we must acknowledge that the life of this clone, which had less lived experience than a fetus, is not paramount over the life of Larissa Flint. Nobody can be compelled by the law to spend nine months nursing a dependent being on life support against their will. But at the point when she was murdered, this clone was an independent being who did not depend on anyone, at least not any specific person, same as any post-birth baby, except for her teenage-looking body. You're ignoring my point. You think just because somebody is dying, that means anyone less developed can be sacrificed and scavenged to keep that person alive? Should we always kill our children when we need a compatible organ donor? Maybe our young adults too, since they're less valuable than our experienced elders? Do you have any conception of what a monstrous society you're proposing, Dr. Stone? There has to be a cutoff. Of course there has to be a cutoff. And where do you draw that line? I draw it at the point where a person becomes more practically sentient and self-reflective than the kinds of lower animals that we wouldn't hesitate to harvest to save a person. But this clone, at the time you murdered her, was as intelligent as any 18-year-old woman, wasn't she? Her brain was a fully developed adult brain? I said practically, not theoretically. A biological capability for language is not language. A biological capability for complex self-reflection is not the same as having actually achieved it. The capability to understand life is not an understanding of life. It's still a creature of instinct until it gains experience. And who gave you the right to decide this? Excuse me, Mayor? Who gave you the right to draw that line there and declare that this woman's capability didn't count because you judged she hadn't actualized it? I'm a doctor. It's in the job description. You're a doctor, not a dictator. It's our law which has the authority to draw the line and tell doctors what to do. Our law says that anyone who has been born has a right to bodily autonomy, a right to live. With respect, Mayor, the law wasn't written with this scenario in mind. I submit that the anti-cloning law was written with exactly this scenario in mind. But at any rate, it's not up to you to overturn a law when you think it contains an oversight. Most criminals think the law they're breaking was a mistake. If we leave it up to each person to decide which laws deserve to be obeyed, then the whole fabric of our society is at risk. Civil disobedience of unjust laws is a time-honored tradition. 10-minute recess. You should have been a lawyer or a doctor. I actually did one of my apprenticeships under Judge Okonkwo, but I couldn't stand being told that what the law said had to take precedent over what I knew was right. Most of our laws were written by narrow-minded people who came quite literally from a very different world than ours. Doctor, I think she's waking up. <sighs> Larissa, can you hear me? Where? What? How do you feel? I feel different. Can you move all your limbs? Any paralysis anywhere? Yeah, I can move. Ribs hurt. Left leg hurts. But my mind... I don't quite feel myself in my mind. You've been through a lot, sis. Give it time. Let's proceed with the defense. 
I understand both of you have witnesses to call? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to call Salish Peters. That asshole? Mr. Peters, would you briefly describe the accident for us in your own words? As you all know, there was an explosion in the primary reactor during the launch day party. Larissa Flint has been apprenticing with me for nearly a year, and she has a real talent for noticing mechanical abnormalities others might miss. And she was with me at the time because we'd been talking at the party when it happened. So when I realized a surface inspection was necessary, I decided to take her with me. She was running a deep scan when she accidentally triggered an exhaust valve and it sent her flying. We tried to help her use her air to maneuver, but there wasn't enough time and she came down hard. I was taking as big of leaps as I could, but it took me a minute to get to where she landed and I saw her helmet visor was smashed. Moving as fast as I could, it still took a few minutes to carry her back to the airlock. By the time the airlock cycled, She'd been without air for about eight minutes, and I thought we'd lost her. With CPR, I was able to get her breathing again and her heart beating before the doctor took over. But I knew there wasn't much hope for her brain after so long. Mr. Peters, in that moment, what would you have given to save her? Anything. My life. How about a two-day-old clone's life? Would you have grown and harvested the clone if it had been up to you? Absolutely. Why? There are some here who say it's wrong. I'm a mechanic. I've always been a mechanic. When one of the systems we rely on breaks down, say, the heating system or a waste processor, when that happens, I'd never hesitate to take a part out of a backup unit in storage and use it to fix the live unit. We always prioritize the active unit over the things we might potentially use in the future. Larissa Flint is someone we rely on. Probably the most gifted apprentice I've ever had. She's part of the fabric of our community. We owed it to her and to ourselves to save her. And if that means taking parts from a clone which has never truly lived or contributed anything else to anyone, then so be it. Easiest decision in our world. Thank you, Peters. Dr. Stone, I believe you also have a witness? I have two witnesses to call. First, the so-called victim. The deceased clone? That's correct, Your Honor. How are you planning to do that? I submit the medical center security video from 12 hours ago when I brought it out for the last growth accelerant injection. Seriously? Proceed. <laughs> Why aren't you growing quick? Just about teenaged already, I think. <laughs> and now, in hopes that you'll recognize the difference, I call Larissa Flint. Proceed. Actually, she needs to stay in bed, but I'll bring her over. Larissa, please tell the court your memory of what happened. I was on the surface. I accidentally released the valve that sent me flying. I came crashing down and my helmet shattered. It felt like my whole face was bruising and the air was being forced out of my lungs. Most horrible thing I've ever felt. Most helpless I've ever felt. And then after a few seconds, I woke up on this medical bed. And that was just a few minutes ago. You remember nothing between being on the surface and waking up here? Nothing. With some brain scans as additional evidence, I submit that Larissa Flint was effectively dead despite her body being alive. Essentially the same state her clone was in for its whole existence. But the clone's brain was undamaged. Structurally undamaged, but there was no experience accumulated in it yet to damage. 
The clone was like a new empty nanodisc, which I've salvaged parts from to recover a nanodisc containing 18 years of our most valued critical data. People are not nanodisks. Irrelevant. The analogy I'm making is clear. Using the brain that never really lived to fix the brain with 18 years of experience is just as obvious a choice as sacrificing the empty nanodisc to recover the old one. I rest my case. Detective Amadi, do you have anything more you'd like to add for your defense? Only that I acted quickly and I did what I had to do to save Larissa Flint's life. I do it again without hesitation. I rest my case. Would the prosecution like to offer a closing thought? Our law is clear that these actions were crimes. No matter what the motives and no matter what your personal opinion of the outcome may be. Defense? The clone of Larissa Flint's DNA without experiences is not Larissa Flint or even a real differentiated individual. Just a potential. I will never regret using it to save the life of the real Larissa Flint. I'll withdraw to consider the evidence and return to render a judgment when I'm ready. Doctor, detective, no matter how this comes out, I want to thank you both for saving my life. Just doing my job. Even if I spend the rest of my life incarcerated, it will have been worth it. Thanks again, detective. Why? Why will it have been worth it, detective? Well, well saving life! Oh boy, you've got a crush on her, don't you? <laughs> You're flushing, detective. How old are you, Detective? 24? Then stay the hell away from my 18-year-old sister. Yes, if I'm in the cell, I won't have much choice anyway. Good. Well, this got awkward. The facts of this case are clear, and the laws are clear. Dr. Stone and Detective Amadi did resist arrest. They did unlawfully conspire to acquire and use cloning technology, and they did unlawfully end a human life. I have no choice but to find both of you guilty on all charges. But you all know Larissa Flint, some better than others. Who among us isn't happy to have her back with us instead of that vacant clone? I cannot in good conscience condemn people for doing exactly what I would have done given the same opportunity, and what I absolutely believe was the right thing to do. Accordingly, I sentence you both to a hundred UN fine. This is lawlessness, anarchy. An affront to those who created our law. It's a spit in the face of the majority who still believe in our law. You want to see me, Mayor? Mr. Amadi? I've officially relieved you of all your duties permanently. I've designated Aranya Tang as your successor, but you won't play any role in her training. I'll handle that. May I go? Go find a hole to crawl into and be thankful for your undeserved freedom. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 3, Trial. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerham. The mayor is Roger Arnold. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Detective Arash Amadi is Paul Neerham. Judge Lee is Rachel Pulliam. Marissa Flint 
is Virginia Hargrove. Ambassador 5 is the eSpeak speech synthesizer. Chief Mech Salish Peters is David Loftus. Apprentice Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. Crowd noises included Emily Eichel and Paul Neerham. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org and freepd.com. Additional music by audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.